Designers, do you guys watch part one of how to sketch like an industrial designer yet? If not, go ahead and watch that video, then come back and watch this video. In the first video, I introduce industrial design sketching and I show you guys how to draw a box. A lot of products out there on the market are based around a box cube shape. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys another shape that is also used quite often. So you being able to master to draw a cube and also a circle or a cylinder, you're gonna be able to draw about 80% of all products out there already. So the other 20%, it's anything that is not a square or a cylinder, which I'm gonna leave that up to you to learn how to draw yourself. In this video, all I'm gonna do is show you guys how to draw a circle in perspective, which is an ellipse, and then we're gonna be able to then jump into the ideation phase where we're gonna begin designing this fan, which is essentially what I wanted to go through with you guys in this series. So let's get to work, guys. Get your pens out and let's hit the desk. designers before we actually get to the pen and paper sketching I wanted to show you guys how ellipses work first by doing that I cut out this green circle right here out of paper so if we look at it orthographic view or straight on view we can see that it is a perfect circle but we're not going to always be drawing everything straight on view. We're going to be drawing it in perspective. How a circle is affected when you look at it in perspective is precisely this. As I go ahead and tilt the green circle, you can see that it now looks flatter than what it used to. This is what we're going to want to imitate on paper. This flattening depending on the angle that we are drawing our product. If we continue on, we can see that the circle is becoming even more flat. So depending on the angle that you select is gonna be how flat that circle becomes. All right, so let's go ahead and draw some ellipses. I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. So drawing ellipses are actually very difficult if you're first starting off and so the idea is to just keep practicing. I remember when I first started off, my ellipses were terrible and my professor told us we had to do like 20, 30 pages of homework in just sketching ellipses and that's really the only way you're just gonna feel confident enough to lay down an ellipse sketch. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do it what you want to do is really focus on your shoulder. You don't want to be drawing from the hand like this where you're only using your hand and your fingertips. What I want you guys to do is use your whole shoulder. That's the only way you're going to be able to lay down a very good ellipse with a confident line. Boom, just like that. You see that? Easy. So I'm just drawing circles there, but let's try going ahead and drawing ellipses. I'm going to go ahead, boom, just like this. Boom, boom. All they need to look is somewhat decent like this and you'll get away with it. Nobody is going to think twice about your ellipse. So go ahead and practice. Draw some ellipses that are different sizes, different degrees, um, ones that are more opened up like a circle, ones that are more flattened out, and just go ahead and practice over and over again. And the more that you do it, the more you will get the hang of it. What I usually love to do is draw an ellipse inside of an ellipse kind of like that because it kind of makes it look like a dish shape. In the real world, not everything is just a complete two-dimensional object. Therefore, we're not only going to be drawing 2D circles and ellipses like what we've just did. We're gonna need to extrude this. Extruding means that you're taking a two-dimensional drawing and you're essentially stretching it out perfectly straight. If we were to extrude a circle, we wind up with a cylinder. I'm going to demonstrate a cylinder for you guys using this salt container right here. It's very, very dirty, but don't focus too much on that. Essentially, what we see on top is a circle 
and on bottom is another circle. So if we were to draw this, we know that there is a circle on top and a circle on bottom that we need to draw. If we were to draw it at this angle, we can see that that top circle is that much squished. And since I talked about degrees with you guys earlier, if we were to have a circle down here, since it's lower, to our eye, it actually looks slightly opened up. We see more of the full circle. So that's what we're going to want to replicate on our piece of paper. All right, let's go ahead and put this to the test by drawing that salt shaker vertical cylinder. So I'm going to draw that top ellipse. I'm going to go ahead and sketch that bottom one, draw that center line, and then connect them together. And there you go, voila, that's how you sketch a cylinder. Very, very simple, isn't it guys? So let me go ahead and sketch one that's a little more top view. So I went ahead and sketched this ellipse a little bit more opened up compared to this one, which is a little flatter. Since I drew it a little bit more opened up, I'm gonna draw the bottom one even slightly more opened up, just like that. Dro drop that center line down, connect them together. What if it was really, really top view, but not quite perfectly top view? Well, it's going to be more like a circle. Then I'm going to draw more of a circle at the bottom, connect them together. And there I have a top view cylinder. Boom. So go ahead and practice this, guys. I want you to draw like a hundred of them and master drawing these ellipses because once you can draw these cylinders just like this, you're able to draw so many different things. It's actually not too bad to sketch cylinders while they're vertical like how we've been doing it. There are many products that sit up vertically like this such as cans or paint bottles or soda cans, vases, maybe even a paper towel roll. But let's say we wanted to draw something like a car tire where it's a cylinder or a donut shape but it's sitting on its side like this. Since we're drawing in perspective and not orthographic view, it's going to look like that. All I did was look at the salt shaker at an angle. This would be orthographic view. This would be perspective view. If we actually take a look at this, we notice that now our circles or ellipses are at an angle. You see how my ellipse here is at an angle compared to when it was a vertical ellipse just like that. What we do in order to draw this is we need to understand our perspective line. If you don't know much about perspective lines, I covered it in part one of this series, so go ahead, check out the description, watch that video, and get yourself a refresher. But essentially, we need to understand the perspective line, and that will act as our center line. So once we lay down our center line, we see that we have our ellipse right here that is perfectly perpendicular to our center line. Same goes with the rear circle or ellipse. All right, let's go ahead and try to draw that cylinder that is laid down. So I'm going to go ahead and drop down that perspective line, which is just something like that. This line here that's at an angle. From there, I'm going to go ahead and drop down my front circle. Boom, just like that. Now let's go ahead and drop down the rear one. Boom, just like that. And you guys notice how this one here is more opened up than this one here. Same thing with that vertical one where that lower ellipse is more opened up. You want to do that with the rear ellipse. Then I'm just going to go ahead Connect these two together, and booyah, I got myself a cylinder that is laid down. So, let's go ahead and just turn this into something because so far I've drawn a lot of ellipses, but you guys are probably wondering what is the whole point of drawing all of these cylinders and ellipses. Well, you guys can draw a lot of different things when it comes to these square cube shapes and these ellipse shapes because you know, everything that we know of, every product is pretty much based off of some type of a primitive object. Things like a cup, things like camera lenses, 
uh, paper towel rolls. They're all gonna have this cylindrical shape. And so I'm gonna turn this here into some binoculars. You know, the binoculars, these are the lenses of the binoculars. I wanna show that they have some kind of curvature. Um, maybe there's like a bevel around here. I'm gonna go ahead, boom, boom. Boom. Turn these into a pair of nice binoculars. Let's see, maybe there's an, maybe something like that. Then I'm gonna connect them together. And there you have it guys, just a very simple pair of binoculars from drawing two ellipses that are laid down side by side next to each other. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I really wanted to go through this quickly, wrap it up so that we can go ahead and start designing our fan. All right, designers, I'm gonna leave it there with how to sketch like an industrial designer. I really hope you guys enjoyed part one and part two here. I'm gonna leave you guys with me sketching this SUV that I posted on my Instagram a couple days ago. Drawing cars is a good one just because of all the ellipses that you have to draw with the wheels. If you don't follow me on Instagram go ahead and do so the links should be down in the description but guys with sketching it's just a very very small part of the whole industrial design process but I really wanted to just show you guys the fundamentals and how I sketch as an industrial designer before we actually jump into um, ideating this fan, showing you guys the full industrial design process, I also want to go ahead and show you guys a little bit of engineering for the next video. Some of the things that they teach us in school, I'm going to go over some of the kinematics and mechanical motions and mechanical uh, mechanisms that they teach us in school so that we can go ahead and design products that actually work and move and function. So that'll be for the next video, guys. So definitely hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my videos and that is about it my name is Jimmy and I'll catch you in the next video peace
ocean of golden hearts A distant locomotion as our minds collide Thank <laughs> you.